morning and welcome to worship today we're so happy to see you and i am so excited to invite you tonight to an event called i love my church from 4 to 6 p.m out on the lawn we're going to have music food great fellowship games for the kids and just a time that is long overdue to see each other and spend time together we're also going to be celebrating Pastor JJ and all of the great work she's done here at FUMC Bentonville over the past year. So come out tonight, 4 to 6, bring a chair, bring your family, maybe your friend, and we'll see you then. Well, good morning. This is the great that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice. Is there anything that you're thankful for on this morning? Let's give God a praise this morning. <laughs> My name is Pastor Andre, and I am so happy to be in worship with you on this morning. It's great to see your faces without the mask, and it's great that you have joined us online. We'll say a special welcome to you. If it's your first time with us, welcome. And we would love to get to know you at some point um, to be a part of our loving uh, worship community. And we want to know that you're here, both in person and online. And so if you want to worship, take a moment to fill out your, the registration passes in your pew. There is an opportunity for you to scan the QR code, code and also fill out, you know, with pen and paper. But also online, there's a link for you to register your, your tenants. And let us know how that we can be in prayer with you on this week. 
So if you take a moment, please let us know, and we'll be in touch with you on this week. Let us pray. Holy God, you have given us grace by the confession of the faith of your holy church to acknowledge the mystery of the eternal trinity. And in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity, keep us steadfast in, the, in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your eternal glory, one God, now and forever. Amen. As you're able, we invite you to stand and join with us as we sing together this morning. Worthy of every song we could ever sing, Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Of every song, worthy of every song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. So holy, there is no one like you. There is none besides you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
sense the mystery that can't be sensed, the giving that is a gift, the beyond that is within us. We bow down and leap up, for the Holy Trinity has found space to rest and to dance in us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
Let the people say amen. It was good to hear you and see you singing this morning. Thanks for joining us online. My name is Pastor JJ. I want to add my welcome to Pastor Andreas. Thanks for making us a part of your memorial holiday weekend and being with us for worship on this Trinity Sunday where we celebrate the Holy Trinity. It's good to be together. I ask for your prayers this week as Pastor Andrea, Dr. Ray, and I, plus our members through the annual conference, Mike Lewis and Kate Schaefer, will be headed down to Hot Springs to be at our Arkansas annual conference this week. Next week, you're going to have some guest preachers. Reverend Don Hall will be here at the 9 o'clock gathering service, and Reverend Michael Maddox will be at the 11 o'clock service. They're retired pastors who are living here in northwest Arkansas. We're so grateful for their leadership to lead you next week as we are away. Would you join me as we read from Holy Scripture? We're going to turn to the book of Romans today, the epistle by by St. Paul, the 8th chapter, verses 12 through 17. Listen for the word of God this morning. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we know you as our holy parent. We know you as the son. We know you as the spirit. And we pray that by the power of the Holy Trinity, We come to reflect on the grace you so freely offer to us as we turn now to your holy word. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor said on one Trinity Sunday that she received a mini Three Musketeers bar on her windshield with a note that said, all for one and one for three, happy Trinity. Now, I've heard a lot of explanations for the Holy Trinity over the years and how we try to explain one in three persons. One pastor said, when human beings try to describe God, we're like a bunch of oysters trying to describe a ballerina. Simply do not have the capacity to understand something so beyond us that has never really stopped us from trying. We do try our best to understand the mystery of God we know as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now I've heard the Trinity is like a shamrock, three leaves making up the whole, or the Trinity is like water we experience in three forms, water, ice, and steam. But I prefer to understand the Trinity in terms of relationship. For instance, I'm a daughter, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm all three relationships, but I'm still one person in these three different relationships. And in these, each of these relationships, my functions are a bit different in the ways that I relate to others. So thinking about the Trinity as relationship is helpful as we look to Paul's letter to the Romans in the eighth chapter this morning. Paul is writing to the community of Christians as those who share in the inheritance as children of God. With God as our holy parent, we walk alongside Jesus Christ as joint heirs in the kingdom being led by the Spirit. Paul reminds us that we have two ways of living in the world and two outcomes as a result of the choice we make in that living. We can live according to the flesh, with our way of being that is of self-interest transient in space and time, ignores the spiritual world, or we can live according to the Spirit, with a way of being that considers others, that is permanent in space and time, that functions out of a relationship with God. 
And our relationship with the Holy Spirit, a Holy Parent makes a difference in our lives because it shapes all of our other relationships and it shapes our orientation in the world. Now, Paul is not saying that taking the second choice, living according to the Spirit, is going to make us free from suffering. But he goes on to say the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. And even further in chapter 8, he compares creation as a place groaning in labor pains. Birthing is difficult business. But like every expectant parent, we know that the labor is worth it. We wait with hopeful expectation in who is about to be birthed and how things are going to change. So just like a parent, spirit living means that we hope for what is not seen. We wait with patience. We are called to a place of hopeful expectation. Hope is not a new concept to people of faith. In the scripture lesson, Paul writes to the joint heirs of Christ, who are those who've also inherited a life of hope. As he says in verse 24, for in hope we are saved. Because we now walk in the light of Christ, Paul is saying we have been adopted as children who receive this gift from God. Again, Paul's not saying that God is going to free us from all suffering or from devastation or from pain, but living as persons of the Spirit, we will have a kind of intuitive knowledge. We will be able to feel the very heart of God. We will see hope as God sees it. David J. Robb said, hope is like grace. It's like a calling. We are bidden even when the evidence isn't all in, and we are graced with hope when all the evidence seems to cry out in despair. Once a student said to me, it's easy to get trapped on the dark side of things. We get caught between the darkness and the light. It's, it's easy to look at the destruction of the world and to believe in it. To believe that war and natural disasters, a pandemic, ongoing illness, abuse, or loneliness are the only realities we know. And we think, there's nothing we can do. This is just the way the world is. And we even begin to question if our lives of faith have real relevance when it comes to the deep needs of the world. What difference does it make? A man walked on a desolate beach one cold gray morning, and he saw another figure far off in the distance. And slowly the two approached each other, and he could make out that it was a local man who kept leaning down, picking something up, and throwing it into the water. Time and again, he, he hurled things into the ocean. And as the distance between them continued to the narrow, the man could see that the other man was actually picking up starfish that had been washed upon the beach and one at a time was throwing them back into the water. Puzzled, the man approached this local man. He asked him what he was doing. He said, I'm throwing these starfish back into the ocean. You see, it's low tide right now. And all these starfish have been washed up onto the shore. If I don't throw them back into the sea, they'll die from lack of oxygen. But there must be thousands of starfish on this beach. The man replied, you can't possibly get to all of them. There's just too many. And this same thing is probably happening on hundreds of beaches all up and down the coast. Can't you see that you can't possibly make a difference? The local man smiled. He bent down. He picked up another starfish. As he threw it back into the sea, he said, it makes a difference to that one. The theologian Don Messer said that Christians have always been in a company of star throwers. We have never shared a vision of defeat and death. We have been aficionados of hope and life. Had we limited ourselves by the defined boundaries of what we deemed reality, we would have never pushed back the borders of Christianity, included the Gentiles. We would have never made strides in the fight for civil rights. Had missionaries been realists, they probably would have never left home because they dreamed of ending poverty and hunger and disease and injustice. Through our relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
we joint heirs are given vision and direction. And we mere mortals on earth share in this company of star throwers. We share in a life of hope. We keep at the business of throwing starfish back in the ocean because we know that this is the vision that God has given us through the life and the death and the rising of Jesus Christ and through the intuitive power of the Holy Spirit. This great company has been granted to those who are adopted into the family of God. Catherine Green McCrate is an Episcopal priest and she has spent most of her life struggling with mental illness. A lot of her struggle has been to grapple with a life of faith in the midst of hopelessness. In her book, Darkness is My Only Companion, she gives us some advice for the times when we are in despair. She says, borrow from the faith of your brothers and sisters in Christ. Worship regularly, daily if possible, not only in the privacy of personal prayers and devotions, but worship in communion with your brothers and sisters in Christ. If praying and praising are impossible for you now, which they may well be, borrow from prayer and praise of those around you. Lean on the body of Christ. You are not your own. You are not on your own. And what you need to do now is hold on to your hope, even if you cannot access it or find relief in it. I know that when I've struggled, the last thing I wanted was for someone to tell me to have hope. That might have been the worst thing you could have told me. But there were times when all I could do was quote a psalm, out of the depths I call to you, Lord, hear my voice. Or I would recite the Lord's Prayer over and over. It was all I could pray. But it would remind me that the body of Christ was out there. And I could link into it when times were tough. In the book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Charlie Bucket sat his whole life at the feet of his four grandparents and listened to these amazing stories of Mr. Wonka and his mysterious candy-making skills. And one day, Willy Wonka announces that five lucky children will be allowed into the secret and wonderful chocolate factory if they find a golden ticket in a Wonka chocolate bar. And at the end of the tour, these five lucky winners will receive enough chocolate to last a lifetime. Wouldn't it be something, Charlie, to open a bar of candy and see a golden ticket glistening inside, said Grandpa Joe? It certainly would, Grandpa. But there isn't a hope, Charlie said. I only get one bar a year. Times are hard for Charlie Beckett and his family. Mr. Bucket has been let go from his factory job, and the family begins to starve. As the author writes it, and now very calmly, with that curious wisdom that seems to come so often to small children in times of hardship, he began to make little changes here and there in some of the things that he did so that he could save his strength. In the morning, Charlie left the house 10 minutes earlier so that he could walk slowly to school so that he wouldn't have to run. And he sat quietly in the classroom during recess, resting himself while the others rushed outdoors and threw snowballs and wrestled in the snow. Everything Charlie did, he did slowly and carefully to prevent exhaustion. Despite the injustice of a child who was hungry, Charlie keeps on. Even in the face of tremendous adversity, Charlie keeps going. Charlie has his family to share good stories and encouragement. Charlie gets his strength from them to keep going. And then one afternoon, he, he sees something in the snow. It's a dollar bill. Did someone drop it? He looks around, but he realizes it's been buried for a while. Could he have it? He held it tightly between his shivering fingers. He gazed down on it. It meant only one thing to him, and that was food. So he runs to the nearest store. He buys one Wonka Whipple Scrumptious Fudge Mellow Delight. He gobbles that up, and he decides that he can have one more dime to go to a chocolate 
bar and suddenly from underneath the wrapper, a brilliant flash of gold. It's a golden ticket, the shopkeeper exclaims. You've got a golden ticket. You know something, the shopkeeper said. He paused a moment, he smiled at Charlie. I have a feeling you needed a break like this. I'm awfully glad you got it. Thank you, Charlie said. And he went running through the snow as fast as his legs could carry him. When times are hard and I get down, I can honestly say that hope is easier when I'm with my family in Christ. A prayer, a song, a hug, a morsel of bread dipped in the juice. These are the sounds, the taste, the feeling of hope when I don't have any for myself. In times of darkness, may we all find the strength to keep going. Borrow from the community of star throwers joint heirs, brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, adopted by the Holy Trinity. That's our golden ticket. And I pray that your break is just around the corner. Amen. In this time, in this time of worship, I want to give you an opportunity to, to ponder more about the word of God that we just heard and let it permeate in our hearts and our minds and our souls. But also if you are this morning looking for a new relationship with Jesus Christ, we ask that you also ponder what that may be for you in, in the coming days. And as I said before, there's opportunity for you to fill out the registration there. You can select a new relationship with Jesus Christ and JJ or I will be in contact with you on this week. I'm going to invite the usher to come forward to prepare, prepare our hearts to give our tithes and our offering. Through the miracle of new life given to each of us, we have been adopted into the family of God. More than this, we are heirs, heirs to the blessing of God's power, wisdom, and love. So let us share what God has blessed us with. Let us pray. It is only because of Jesus Christ that we are bold enough to call you Father and Mother, O Sovereign of the Universe. And to remind ourselves of our many sisters and brothers, your many children who need hope and care. Use our gifts to reach others the story of your great love for our world. Amen. So easy to cash in these chips on my shoulder So easy to lose this old song like a tiger It's easy to let the song bitterness smolder Just to hide it away like a cigarette lighter It's easy to curse and to hurt and to hinder It's easy to not have the heart to remember That I am a priest and a prince in the kingdom of God I've got voices that scream in my head like a siren Fears that I feel in the night when I sleep Stupid choices I made when I played in the mire Like a kid in the mud on some dirty blind street I've got sorrow to spare, I've got loneliness too I've got blood on these hands that holds on to the truth That I am a priest and a prince in the kingdom of God I swore on the Bible to not tell a lie But I've lied and lied I crossed my heart and I hope to die And I've died and died but if it's true that you chathered my sin in your hand 
And you cast it as far as the east from the west If it's true that you put on the flesh of a man And you walked in my shoes through the shadow of death If it's true that you dwell in the halls of my heart And I'm not just a fool with a fancy guitar No, I am a priest and a prince in the kingdom Yes, I am a priest and a prince in the kingdom of God. Amen. What a beautiful song. We're so grateful for our musicians, our worship team this morning.